Hi, I'm Susan. These are some quick Zoom tips to make our meetings at the Grand Connection more productive for you and for you to network better. I'm going to start off by sharing my screen here and that's something we can do on Zoom. And for the first thing you're going to experience is launching the Zoom web app. You will click on the link after you register, you'll get a link to our meetings and you click on the link and you're going to download Zoom and it's going to open up. You're going to launch it on your computer and it's going to open up into a Zoom room. If you haven't used Zoom before, my suggestion would be before your meeting to go to zoom.us, get a free account there and host your own meeting. You can do it by yourself and just play around and it's even better yet if you get a friend to come in you get them in on the same meeting and you guys practice using some of the tools together. So at any rate, it would be good if you're on Zoom now as you go through, because it's going to make a lot more sense. Pause it, get on Zoom, and then we'll go through this together while you are Zoom up on your computer. So the next thing you're going to see when you come in now, you're here in the Zoom room, is you're going to see the Zoom bar. It's not Zumba, it's a Zoom bar. And this is our toolbar. This is what we use to control the meeting room. And it's really important that you know where to find it and where it hides because it likes to hide. If you can't find it, try scrolling your mouse around the corners. It'll sometimes pop up. Another thing that can happen is it can be, there will be, might be an icon that shows up at the bottom of your computer for it. And if you click on that, it'll pop up. And if you have a lot of windows, other windows open, best to close them all down before you start the meeting so you've got less places for the Zoom bar to hide. Quick walk around when you arrive, we have different gallery views. You can have it on speaker view only, or you can go to a gallery view and see more people. When a screen is shared, everybody will have the screen on one side and all the people along the side with arrows up and down to scroll through. You can adjust the size of the screen that's showing so that you can see more people on the side. You can also, um, now it doesn't work when you're screen sharing, but if we have a full gallery of people, you can pin the person speaking so that they will be full screen for you if you want to do that too. So those are other options during the meeting. When you have a full screen of people, you may not be seeing everybody and you may see arrows on the side and you can scroll through to see who else is at the meeting as well because a lot of times we're connecting up with different people and want to see who's there and then when you know who's participating you can chat with them and participate with them on the on the chat as well so this is the unmute button is the most important one to know at the start because you want to make sure when you arrive in the meeting you're muted and try to stay muted all the time, except for when you're speaking. Know where it is, because when it's your turn to speak, you want to be able to unmute yourself very quickly. You've all heard people on calls and you're going, you're muted, you're muted, you're muted. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> it's going to happen to us. It's okay. Everybody's here learning together, but it's good to know where it is. And that's why it's always nice to practice this ahead of time. For the video, you can, you can turn your video on and off get used to doing that. When, um, you know, if there's something going on in my background, my, some, some commotion, I might turn the video off so that it's not disruptive for anybody on the screen. When we're communicating and per participating in the rooms, it's really nice to have the videos on because this is how we are networking and talking. You may be seeing everybody else, but if they can't see you, it's, it's harder for them to connect with you. And your, your goal for coming to these is to, network, connect, meet new people, and get new business. So come there and, and participate. And by practicing a little bit ahead is, is good to do. The participants, if you click on this, you will see all the people in the meeting. Uh, sometimes we'll have activities where we share our screen, and this is where you will do that. And I like the chat. The chat is a really good place for you to communicate with the whole group, everyone, or to individuals in the group. And always watch the leave the meeting. There's leave the meeting and leave the room. When you're in a breakout room and you're coming back to the main room, leave the, just leave the room. Because if you leave the meeting, you gotta come back in again. You can always come back in on the same link. So just keep that in mind. If you ever get booted off for some reason, your internet goes down, come back to the same link and it'll be still available. 
Some of you may have been on webinars with Zoom. Meetings are different than webinars. In a webinar, you don't have as many um, features that you can do. You don't have video and you can't, can't uh, speak and do other things with people, but you can ask questions. But this is a meeting. We use meetings because we're about networking, engaging, and participating. When we are in the meeting, um, we have the mute button. I'm going to go back to this. Sometimes your quality of your sound isn't very good. And you can test when you get started. If it's working, when you're logging in, you can test your microphone and you can test your, your audio, your speakers to see if they're working. If the sound quality is poor, it makes communicating difficult. So I suggest if you notice that it's not good, what you can do is sync your phone to the call. So here you would leave, if you notice it's not good, leave the computer audio. And I used to do this for a long time before I got a different microphone. Um, leave the audio. Then you go leave computer here. And then for there, this is going to switch the icon to just a headset. So this is now saying, what kind of audio do you want? You're not connected to any audio. You would join with your phone. Okay. So here it will give you instructions on what to dial in. You're going to dial the phone number, you dial the meeting ID, and then you dial the, the, the participant ID. And that is going to sync your phone to your picture so that when I'm talking through my phone and I can use the headset of my phone, I just can use my, my earbuds from my phone, I will now be just one person. If you come in as a, as a, as a uh, video and one on the speaker, and then you come in with a different phone, you're coming in as two people, when we do net rounds of networking, your phone might go here, you might go there, and it's just kind of confusing to everybody what's going on. And somebody, that's what happens a lot. And you'll see somebody in a meeting room and they're not participating. It's probably because they came in on two devices and they didn't turn off the other device and nobody, they're not participating in both rooms. Starting your video here um, from the video button, there's a little arrow up. You can go into the video settings and in there, you can do a few things that are important. You can mirror your video if you want to know what's right and left and, and be able to point to things. That is kind of nice to do. You can also touch up your appearance, which is a good one. And you can also go from the video settings when the little arrow on the dashboard on your Zoom bar, there's the video, you can go in and choose your virtual background. And from this part, you can, if you have a green screen, you'd click that on, it'll change it. And if you don't have a green screen, you can still put in a fun background. And here, right here, is where you could upload a different picture, maybe, you know, your backyard or your favorite place and put that in as your background. A lot of people are setting up Zoom backgrounds and they'll put their logo up, like I've done here. See, I'm not mirroring. I don't know which side I'm at. So you can put your logo up and that will help people brand. It brands you and helps people know who you are better as well. This is all about trying to find ways to communicate and, and share your message with other people and all of us to learn together. So we're all learning these tools as we go along. Uh, another thing is our participants. So this is where we can change our name. You click on participants, find yourself, go to the more, and then the more is gonna open up. And here's where you can rename yourself. And you can, I like to put, this one isn't done well, but I would put, your full name, and then your company name. Part of it's gonna cut off in some of the screens, but when you're speaking, it will show the full name and people get to know you better. And also when you're seeing the full participant list of all the people listed there, your name and company is showing up there. So that's a good thing to do to help you in your networking. And it's in the participants that you can also raise your hand. Sometimes when we have a speaker, we will have questions at the end and you can raise your hand there. Good to know where that is. Once in a while, the speaker isn't going to see your hand, so don't, don't, because uh, she's trying to navigate her screen sharing and everything and may not notice it, she or he, you can also raise your hand in the screen and that's very effective too. So they're looking around to see who's, who's, has questions. In the chat, we have everyone and you can also talk privately to people. So that will drop down who you're selecting. See here, we've got everyone. I can drop it down and I can select uh, Carolyn and I can chat a private message to Carolyn or I can select it to everyone. And people will also be chatting possibly with you. 
And if they come in, the most recent person you spoke to will be the one that it defaults to. So if you have had somebody sending you messages and then you want to put your business introduction to everyone, watch that you've selected everyone because a lot of times you'll forget and you send it back to the last person who spoke to you and you miss sending it out to the whole group. When we use the chat for business introductions, we put in information and we like to put it all in in one shot. And I'm just going to show you how I do it. This is my, all my information. I have it already written ahead of time. And then I will just copy it and paste it in when, when it's the right time. And I'll put it in one time. If you put in one line and then enter one line and then enter, what ends up happening is your name might come here, someone else puts their stuff, and then your website comes here and no one gets that information because it's when they save it at the end, it's all messed up. So try to keep it clear and concise for everybody and they're gonna be more easy, easily finding you. We do all sorts of different business introductions and always know where the mute is when you're doing your introduction so that when it's your turn, you can go mute yourself on and off afterwards. Uh, this is one example where we just did name, business, and location. Uh, out of etiquette, try to stay when there's a certain time limit, we try to stay with our time limits so that everybody gets a chance to, to introduce themselves. In the smaller groups, we often will do 30 second introductions or a 60 second introduction. And if you haven't prepared an introduction, and you, you know, this is all learning, we're all learning them together. Um, they're good, a good resource is in our Facebook group. Judy Carter has done, uh, from her talk, a very good explanation of how to do a 60-second pitch and using her message of you formula. And a lot of people have been very successful in using that. So that's a good resource to get your introduction, but try to keep them relevant, short, catchy, um, and, and end it with how people can connect with you. It's always a good way. Real-time connections. This is where we go into different breakout rooms. When we do rounds of real-time connections, just where we do introductions, it's just short, kind of like speed networking. Go in there, everybody does their pitch. We go to another room, everybody does their quick pitch. We also at other times will go in and spend longer in mastermind in those, in those groups. Now, when we're doing the breakouts, you're gonna be asked to join a breakout room. So this icon will come up and you just click on the button for the join breakout room and you're in the room. If you're in the room and you need help, there's an ask for help button. And sometimes you may have a question. Sometimes there can be a person in there that um, maybe has left their screen on or their screen got hung up or maybe they come in on two devices and they're not actually there and you, you're not just sure, it's just kind of, you don't want them there just do a help, I'll come in, see what's happening. I can see where what's happening from my controls and then we can move them out, okay? So just know that you've got the help. You can also at any time leave the room, come back out, find me in the main room and ask me any questions and then I'll put you back in the room. So you can do that as well if, if I'm not noticing the help button right away. This is help on a, on a mobile device. It's mobile and the desktop, it's all a little bit different. The desktop works a lot better. It has a lot more features and it's way easier to cut and paste things and use the chat than on the phone or on your, on your tablet. But I have come into meetings when I've been traveling on my iPad or on my phone when I had the computer wasn't there. And you can still commute, you can still do things, but it is a little bit, it's easier on your computer. Here's sort of what some of the things would look like on the, on the, on the phone. One thing to always remember is leaving the meeting, leaving the, the, the breakout room, and then for me, if, if, or if you're hosting your own meeting at other times, if you end the meeting for all, everybody's gone. So always watch what button you're pushing. So when I leave, you're leaving your breakout rooms, just come back to the main, leave the main. When you, if you've left the meeting room, the whole meeting, you're going to end up having to log back in again. At the very end of our meetings, we will save the chat. I will try to remind you to save the chat, but it's good to know it's the three dots at the bottom and it will save the chat onto your hard drive. This will show up under Zoom directory on your computer if you're looking for it. 
and then you've got it all. Now, another thing you can easily do is scroll and grab all of the stuff and put it in a Word document too. But if you come in and out, it sometimes will only, if you left a meeting, you won't get anything that was from before. So saving the chat is helpful to have. Mobile and tablets, I've already talked a little bit about that. It's very similar, um, but the features are less on the devices. So I like to use my desktop. You can raise your hand, you can do all the same things, muting, using different audios, different video, you can turn your video on and off, touch up your appearance. And one last important thing is before you start a meeting, it's always good to check your video, make sure the lighting's good so you've got light in your face and you know people can see if, if it's really dark. You want the light in front of you, so you don't have, you know, don't be behind, don't have a window behind you because you're gonna have backlight and you won't be able to see yourself. Other people won't be able to see you clearly. And then check the audio, make sure your speaker, your microphone is clear. And if you're running things through your phone or computer's not plugged in, make sure the batteries are good or you're charged, right? So that you're not gonna have something die on you right in the middle of it and uh, you lose that opportunity. Zoom has great support, zoom.us if you need more instructions and you wanna learn more about it. And we look forward to seeing you at the next Grand Connection. Our, at, our website has all of our upcoming events and lots of uh, reminders and different things. Sign up for our reminder list if you aren't on it already. And we look forward to seeing you at the next Grand Connection. Connect, create, and collaborate.